Mark, let's start with the performance for 2014. You are a hard man to please. Are you satisfied yet? Well, oh John, I think you already know the answer to that. Of course I'm not satisfied. Uh, have we made some tangible progress? Sure we have. Is that progress a little bit ahead of where everyone thought it would be? Yeah, perhaps it was. I think we've got further to go than the distance we've already come. But I think it's important to look at the numbers and take stock of where we are and then move forward. If you have a look at cash flow, and the market focuses a lot on cash flow. Cash flow, the excess holding company Cash Flow Act Group, that's up 65%. Uh, that's a uh, quite an acceptable sort of result. Our main measure of growth, value of new business, that's up to a record one billion pounds. Earnings per share is up 10%. Expenses from our baseline at the end of 2011 are down 571 million. So all those numbers, all those key metrics, they're all going in the right direction. And I accept that probably some of those numbers are a little bit ahead of where the market was anticipating they'd be. Um, and I'm sure a lot of shareholders will be asking, what about the dividend? Well, the dividend, uh, I think we've shown that with these results, we started this year from, uh, I guess, a position of some pretty good strength. And when we announced the Friends transaction, we put the dividend, that's the final dividend, we put it up 30%. And we did that because we'd made progress in all those issues, and I guess we were trying to repay some of the faith our shareholders had in us. You say you're not satisfied yet, and yet all you've given me so far is unalloyed good news. Are there any negatives there? You know, you know, John, you know me, I think, well enough by now. I like to focus on the things we've got to fix, and I try and focus the organisation on the problems we have. And there's a lot of things I'm really still quite unhappy about. I think our uh, products per customer is entirely inadequate, and for a composite insurer like us, should be much higher. I think our expenses are still too high. I accept we've exceeded our targets that we'd put to the market. I accept that. Obviously, when you have a look at the asset management side of the business, that's still um, inadequate when you consider the scale of that business and what earnings we should be getting out of there over time. So good progress, but there's so many issues that we still need to address in the business, and that's what we're trying to focus on. So let's talk about profit growth. What is driving that? Well, the profit, as you know, was up 6% on the year, and that was despite some headwinds. We had, we had currency going against us, we had quite major regulatory changes here in the UK. So we had some headwinds, and despite all that, it went up. So what's driven that? Well, we've been selling more profitable product. We've been, had some pretty good results out of the GI, and I'm sure we'll come on to that later, out of the general insurance. Uh, so those are certainly going in the right direction. We've been focusing on the back book in the life business, and we've had some good um, profits out of that and we'll continue to do that. We had signalled that to the market so I guess uh, we've delivered what we said. But we've got, I guess, much more things going right than, than going wrong and that's a reasonable place to be. There's also been a big increase in book value. Now was that anticipated? Uh, I don't think the market would have anticipated that. Uh, it's a 26% increase in book value, that's the IFRS NAV. And uh, that's been driven by a number of things. Obviously, you had profit going into there and the reduction in expenses, and that's all helped. Uh, it's also had quite a significant impact from the way that pension accounting is done. IAS 19, as we all know, there's a lot of vagaries about that accounting system. And so that's had some quite big benefits. But I want to keep everyone's feet on the ground here. and We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, as you could lose some of that quite quickly as well. What it has done, though, is had quite a significant decrease in our debt leverage ratios. Uh, this was a factor that did concern me and it concerned the market. And we've gone on our old basis from 48% to 41%. And on the S&P basis, which is the basis I prefer going forward, it's gone down to 28%, which is well within our target range and, in fact, within the AA range. So we have, and that's even before we take the benefits of the friend's life delivering. So yes, I accept it's positive news. I don't want us to get too ahead of ourselves. And I want us all to understand the dynamics behind that. And on the UK life businesses, you alluded to it a moment ago, that you have faced some regulatory headwinds. How difficult have they been? Well, they have been difficult. Um, just to be clear, I agreed with the regulatory changes, particularly in the pensions. I think that's good for customers. And if it's good for customers, it's going to be good for us in the end. 
Now, the benefit of a company like Aviva is we're a diversified insurance group. And insurance is about diversity. Insurance is about taking the risk off one and putting it on to many. At Aviva, we have so many levers we can pull and so many products that we can change our focus on to make up shortfalls in terms of uh, sales profitability. The annuities were down a bit to, uh, to be expected, uh, but other parts of the business fill in those gaps. And that's what makes us different. We've got a systemic competitive advantage, and I think you've probably seen that in the results. And the combined operating ratio, that I think I'm right in saying is a measure of your general insurance. Now, at a group, it has been performing well, but what about in the rest of in the, in those businesses? So our overall result at 95.7 uh, is the best for some time, and uh, I, you know, I think that was a, a highly satisfactory performance. Uh, underlying that, though, it hides what's really going on. So what we saw within that was a quite outstanding result from the UK general insurance. Now that's despite, I remember last time we spoke, we were talking about the floods at the beginning of last year. So despite those floods, we had an excellent results. And that is because of what we've done with predictive analytics and the data we have. Now Canada, Canada conversely, wasn't as good as the year before. Uh, still a good return on capital, still good results when you compare it with the market but we had a high incidence of small claims in Canada, and so that pulled the results back a bit. But again, it comes back to that diversity question. When you have multiple geographies and multiple products, what you can get is some good results, and so one country or one bad set of results doesn't pull the overall group down too much. Probably the big news of the last 12 months has been Friends Life. Mm -hmm. Are you still as convinced it is as good a deal as when it first emerged? Well, when we were able to go to the market and actually announce it, I was convinced that it was, I think the words I used were actually compelling. But what it fundamentally does, John, is de-risk our turnaround story. You know, you know, John, when I come into a business, it's very easy to see what you need to do. You can look at an insurance company and see what you need to do. The hard part's getting people to actually execute it. And you need a catalyst to help you do that. In the last couple of years, we had the catalyst and the... Uh, the results and the balance sheet and all the things we just had to do. And this transaction, I believe, can be the catalyst for the next phase of turnaround of Aviva. And certainly people internally in the organisation are seeing it that way. It will give you a lot of cash and benefits, but a lot of commentators are raising the question, do you have to do this deal? I think there's a very simple answer for that. Look at 2014 numbers. I think that probably stops any debate. Uh, we're doing it very much from a position of strength. Uh, we've made a bit more progress than even we had anticipated we would make. Uh, because of that, we were able to put the final dividend up 30%. So we are doing this from a position of strength. Well, let's talk about international business, because in the past, you have sometimes said, well, haven't been going as well as it could have been. How have they performed this year? Well, again, I, I think it's, uh, it's been mixed. There's been some highlights, so I think... One of our problem children was Italy. Dare I say it, I'm almost tempted to take them out of the turnaround status because their results uh, have been very good indeed. Uh, we've had some uh, very good results and growth out of China. It's 100% growth last year on top of 100% growth the year before. Uh, I think that's entirely satisfactory too. But let's be really clear what we're talking about. When you have a look at all these markets going around the world, no one internally is under any illusion about how we're performing. Yes, it's progress, but progress doesn't mean you're anywhere near where you should be. Um, let's talk about the asset management business because uh, you have recently faced a pretty hefty fine. It's been all over the press and you found yourself on the wrong side of the regulators. John, I wouldn't characterise it as being on the wrong side of the regulators at all. Uh, in fact, I think their fine on us was entirely appropriate. The facts are that there was a conflict of interest issue that went on for a number of years and it was entirely unacceptable. Entirely unacceptable. And the regulator uh, worked with us. In fact, I think the regulator described our cooperation as being exceptional uh, in their press release. But let's be clear, uh, there was an issue. And what we did is we've put it right. We've made sure no client suffered any detriment whatsoever. We've, made, we've put a lot of time and money and resources into fixing the risk controls around that business, so now we know they're very robust. 
Now, I know some people have said, well, the management, was new management at Aviva since that issue happened, because it finished at the end of 2012. And also, it's an entirely new senior team at Aviva Investors as well. But you know what? It's up to us to take responsibility. It's up to us to say, here's an issue, we're accountable, we'll take responsibility, our job's to fix it. And that's what we've done. We're starting to talk about the future now and for what's ahead in 2015. Mm. It's not all going to be plain sailing. There are going to be big job losses. There are going to be job losses. And um, an unfortunate part of when you do a uh, good size acquisition like the Friends Life, when you put those two businesses together, there will be job losses. And we've said those job losses will be 1,500. Um, uh, that's something that is tough on our people, and I recognise that. And I, I think our people are, have been exemplary through this whole process. Um, we need to keep on consulting with them. We need to take them through it. My commitment is I want to get certainty to our people as fast as we possibly can. We want to take the pain, take it very quickly, get over it and move on. And that's what our people want as well. What are the priorities for 2015? Well, there's a number, isn't there? We've, we've spoken about uh, the Friends deal. One of the priorities is certainly executing that deal, making sure that we can put these businesses together, uh, getting the right outcome for our customers and our people and shareholders out of that. So that's certainly a priority. Uh, delivering on our strategy of the true customer composite and the digital first strategy. Uh, continuing to focus on expenses, uh, reallocating our capital to the segments and the product lines and the businesses and the markets that can get higher returns on capital. That's a priority as well. And the priority is not getting too far ahead of ourselves. I mean, if you go back two years, and you step back and have a look two years ago, uh, there was a lot of people in the market thought Aviva was unfixable. And I can understand why. It was like being in a huge boat with a whole lot of leaks and you didn't know which leak to put your hand over first. But as we've stopped those leaks and strengthened the boat, all of a sudden we've found that the boat's starting to go a whole lot faster. So we've got to just keep clear about what we're doing, be realistic about our focus and uh, keep improving the business. I want to ask you a final question. And it's a personal question. You've been CEO now for two years. How are you doing? How am I doing? I, I don't think that's up to me to judge, actually, John. I think that's up to the mark and the shareholders. Yeah, but you, you judge yourself harshly. I want to know how you think you're doing, what's gone well, room for improvement. Well, I think how, how I'm doing is uh, I really enjoy what we're doing. There's nothing more satisfying than taking a business that has issues and, and a business that's a brand and has the history and legacy of this and moving it forward. But you see, uh, and I'm not being evasive on the question, but I don't see performance over the last two years. I accept we've made some progress and I accept it's more than people were expecting, I get that. But you don't create a legacy over two years. I think the right time to ask that question is years in the future and say, how did you do and how do you judge your performance? I think at that time I'll be able to answer it. Maybe you'll invite me back to ask that question. Mark Wilson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, John.